Hello everyone, this is Ms. Fatma and this is an introduction to Act 1, Scene 1 and 2 of Julius Caesar. Let's start with the setting. The setting is a street in Rome and it's a holiday celebrating the feast of the Luprical and Caesar's victory over Pompey. Now, Caesar and Pompey were both ruling Rome as tribunes and then there was a civil war between them and Caesar managed to defeat uh, Pompey's son and now he is back to Rome and people are celebrating his triumph over Pompey's sons. Uh, the characters introduced here are Flavius and Marilus and some commoners. Summary of Act 1, Scene 1. The play opens with the citizens of Rome celebrating Caesar's victory in the war. The tribunes, Flavius and Marillus, tell them off for reaching that way and taking a holiday to honor Caesar, telling them that he has not brought back any conquest or spoils and that they are forgetting how much they used to love Pompey, the Roman leader who Caesar had defeated. The tribunes say to them, uh, and do you strew flowers in his ways? That comes in triumph over Pompey's blood. Flavius here suggests uh, he and Marilus tear down the decorations from Caesar's statues, saying Caesar will sour above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness. Of course, there will be consequences to their act, the act of removing the crowns and the robes of, Cer of Caesar's uh, statues. Now, act in Act 1, Scene 2 of Julius Caesar, Caesar arrives with his entourage, which is his company, people who are walking with him. In, this includes his wife, Calpurnia, and loyal friend, Antony. Of course, they're followed by Cassius and Brutus. A soothsayer in the crowd calls out a warning to Caesar, saying, Beware the Ides of March. And by Ides means, means mid-March. But Caesar dismisses it, as we see later, the way he dismisses all the signs that will lead to his demise. The entourage then leads to go to a ceremonial race, leaving Brutus, a trusted friend of Caesar. Brutus was like a son to Caesar, okay? So you know the relationship. And Cassius alone. Cassius begins to flatter Brutus, but Brutus is distracted by shouts he can hear coming from the race. He fears Caesar is being crowned king and accidentally voices his thought out loud. At this, Cassius begins to openly criticize Caesar, calling times when Caesar showed physical weaknesses. Cassius reminds Brutus of his reputation and his concern for the good of Rome rather than personal triumph. Caesar and his entourage, his company, return after the race and Caesar says to Antony that Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much, that's what Caesar said. Such men are dangerous. But Antony assures him that Cassius is noble. After Caesar leaves again, Casca tells Brutus and Cassius that Antony offers Caesar a crown three times at the race, but Caesar refused it. Casca adds that Caesar fell down and foamed at his mouth, he had a seizure, and Brutus confirms that Caesar has the falling sickness. He tells Cassius he will give his words, thought. Left alone with the audience, Cassius points out how easily Brutus' noble nature can be manipulated. Okay? And I think these two uh, scenes set the stage for the political background of the story. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope this was useful.